Hello everyone, in this Control Engineering Dynamical Systems and Python Scientific Computing tutorial we will learn how to animate the motion of a card pendulum system in Python. That is, you will learn how to generate this amazing animation. This animation is based on the state trajectories obtained by simulating the dynamics of the card pendulum system. This animation is created by using the Pygame library. Pygame is a powerful Python library for creating computer games. This library can be very useful for simulating the motion of dynamical systems such as inverted pendulums, mobile robots and other systems. You are currently watching the second tutorial part. In the first tutorial part, whose link is given in the description below this video tutorial, we explain how to automatically create a state-space model of the card pendulum system and how to simulate the dynamics of this model in Python. Consequently, before watching this video tutorial, we strongly suggest you that you go over the first tutorial part. The second tutorial part is strictly dedicated to the problem of animating the motion of the cart and the pendulum in Python. That is, we will just use the state trajectories that are simulated in the first tutorial part. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial, as well as more than 450 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. First, let's import the necessary libraries. First, we will import the Pygame library. Then, we will import the NumPy library. And over here, we will initialize the Pygame modules. We will type Pygame and then we will call the function init. Perfect. Let's set the animation window size. To do that, we will type size is equal to width height and over here let's specify the width to be 1600 and the height to be 800 then let's create our screen object by calling pygame dot display then over here we type set mode size okay we will often refer to this object screen in the functions that we will call later on in the script. Then let's initialize and create the object called clock pygame.time.clock. Perfect. Now if you execute this piece of code, you will see an empty pygame simulation window. If you try to manually close this window, by clicking over here, you will see a problem. You will not be able to close this window. To close this window, go back to the code and type pygame.quit. And if you execute this line, the window will be closed. So keep in mind that our animation will be generated frame by frame. Every frame will be created by drawing corresponding geometrical objects such as rectangles, circles, and lines. Consequently, we need to define a frame counter. I will call the frame counter as i and I will set it to zero. The next step is to import the simulation data. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video tutorial, in this video tutorial I will not explain how to simulate the card pendulum dynamics. To learn how to do that, watch the first part of this video tutorial. In the first part of this video tutorial, we created a file called simulationdata.npy and that file stores the simulation data. Over here, we will simply load that file. I will type solution array is equal to numpy.load and over here I need to specify the name of the file. The name of the file is simulationdata.npy. And be careful over here. 
make sure that your current folder is actually the folder in which this file is being stored. If the current folder shown over here is not the folder in which this file is stored, Python interpreter will return an error. So let's test this and make sure that this piece of code is actually working. Okay, let's verify this by typing over here solution array and here it is. Let's check the size of the solution array. Perfect, I have 15,000 rows and four columns. Every column corresponds to the, cor to the state of the system. The first state of the system is the position of the card. The second state, that is the second column, is the velocity of the card. The third column is the third state, and that's the angle of the pendulum. And the fourth state is actually the angular velocity of the pendulum. Perfect. So we have our simulation data and we can proceed. Now note again that by running this piece of code until here, I generated this window over here, and that's the simulation, or better to say, animation window. You cannot close it manually, you need to evaluate this line, and the window will be closed. Let's continue. The next step is to extract the x coordinate of the card. We will type this x is equal to solution array, all the rows, first column. Next, let's extract the angle of the pendulum theta or theta. The angle of the pendulum, or better to say its time sequence, is stored in the third column. Okay. Perfect. If we type x, this is the position of the cart, and if we type theta, we obtain the angle of the pendulum. However, we cannot directly use the values of x obtained by simulating the dynamics. We need to properly scale the values of x. Namely, the simulated values of x are represented in meters. However, the position of objects in the animation screen is represented in screen pixels. Consequently, we need to map x to pixels. The idea over here is to define this linear transformation. X is the position of the cart in meters and p is the position of the cart in pixels. k is the scaling constant and b is the offset. We need to determine k and b. We find these constants by solving this system of equations. p min is the minimum value of the position in pixel and we define this by ourselves. For example, if the screen is, let's say, 1600 pixels wide, p min will be, for example, 300. p max is the maximum position in pixel. For example, again, if the screen is 1600 pixels wide, the maximum value will be, for example, 1200. Okay, x min and x max value are computed from the vector x, that is from our simulation data, and by solving this system of equations, we can compute k and b. k value is given over here, and the b value is given over here. Once we compute these values, we simply use this equation to scale and to offset our values of x. Before I create such a system, let me first compress this piece of code. Okay. First, we need to define the max value of x we'll simply type this. Then we need to define the mean value of x, that is the minimum value. Next, we need to define this variable called offset screen limits, and I will set it to 500. Then my p min that I will actually denote by lb, that is the lower bound, will be equal to offset screen limits. The upper bound, that is the Pmax, is equal to width of my screen, and the width is defined over here. It's 1600 minus offset screen limits. Next, let's implement the formula for scale x. The scale x is upper bound 
minus lower bound divided by max x minus min x. Okay, and let's define the offset. The offset x is lower bound minus scale x multiplying minimum value of x. Perfect. Let's double check this piece of code. Perfect. And finally, let us scale the values of x. x is equal to scale x multiplying the value of x plus the offset x. So x will be actually p. Okay, so let's evaluate this. And now let's check the values of x. The mean value of x is actually 500. And that's precisely the lower bound over here. And the max value of x is actually 1100. Perfect, as expected. So our card will move between 500 and 1100 pixel. Before we continue, we need to understand a few things about pi game and geometry of our problem. Here's how pi game assigns the coordinate systems. The y direction, that is the y axis, is oriented downwards. The x direction is in this direction. Over here is zero. The black square over here is our animation window. For example, if we specify the point 50, 50, we will measure 50 in this direction, 50 in this direction, and the point will be over here. This is our card pendulum system. It consists of rail, two wheels, cart, rod, ball, and the pendulum support denoted by this point C. The point C is actually the center of this circle, the orange circle. For our animation, the most important point is this point C. This point will be used as a geometrical reference for defining all other objects and elements. In addition to this, we set X to be equal to XC, that is, the X variable coming from the Python simulation of the nonlinear card pendulum dynamics is actually equal to xc. Next, we will define the geometry of our objects and we will define the colors. But before we do that, let's compress this piece of code. And let me expand this such that you can clearly see what I'm typing. Over here, I define the geometrical parameters and the colors. All the numbers given from here to here are in pixels. First, let's define the ball radius. Here's the ball, and the ball radius is equal to 40. Next, let's define the card width and the card height. Here's the card width, and here's the card height. Here are the numerical values. Next, let's define the rod length. The rod is given over here, and its length is 300 pixels. Next, let's define the wheel radius. Here are the wheels. The radius is 25. Next, let's define the radius of the pendulum support. Here is the pendulum support, and the radius is 15. Now, another variable that needs to be defined is this variable yc. We set it to constant. That is equal to 400. Note over here that yc doesn't change over time. yc is always constant. This is because the card pendulum system moves along this rail. Next, we need to define the colors. Here are the colors. This is R, G, B. Red, blue, green. And these are the codes for different colors. For example, for the rail, this orange color, this is the code. For the card, that is this bright yellow color, this is the code, etc. Perfect. The next step is to create the animation loop. Here is our loop. It's a while loop that goes over the entries of the vector x. 
Over here, we define a simple loop environment that is a for loop that will close the window if the running is equal to true. This is not important and you don't need to understand this piece of code. We set the background color as black and let's continue. For every value of i, we need to generate a frame and inside of that frame we need to draw geometrical objects such as the cart, balls, lines, rails, etc. First, let's define the reference C point of our cart. XC is always equal to X of I. Uh -huh. The point C is always moving and its position is actually X of I. The YC coordinate is always fixed and it's equal to previously defined Y position cart. Let's search for Y position cart. It's defined over here. It's equal to 400. However, you can change these values later on. First, let's draw the rail. I will type here, here rail such that you can better understand what I'm actually doing. To draw the rail, we need to draw the line in pi gain. Consequently, we need to call pi gain dot draw dot line. Over here, we need to put the reference object, that is, we draw inside our screen. And if you go back, the screen is defined over here at the beginning of our code. And keep in mind that. The second input parameter is the color of the rail. Color, rail, perfect. Then we need to specify the start and end coordinates of our line. Let's do that. Okay, let's do that. The start point of the line is defined like this. Let's type. Over here, I will type integer of mean value of x minus 300. Here I need to use integer since the values of x can be flowed. So keep in mind that. Then this is the x coordinate of the first point. The y coordinate is integer yc. This is the position of the reference point c in the y direction plus cart height. plus two times wheel radius. Okay, so this is the first point. Now, let's define the second point. Again, let's create a tuple. Don't forget to add comma over here. And let's type integer. And over here, we will have max of x plus 300 then comma, and we will simply paste this part over here. Since the y coordinates of the rail do not change. And finally, over here, we need to specify the thickness of our cart, or actually of our rail. The thickness of the line is six. Perfect. Let's now execute the complete code and let's see if everything works as expected. So I will select this part and let's hope that there will be no errors. Okay, nothing happens over here. Mm -hmm. So there is an issue. So let's go back to our code, go over here, then click over here, press Ctrl C, then go over here and execute this line, pi game quit. Okay, this will close the window. Now, inside of this loop, we need to add several commands or several functions in order to display the objects. First of all, we need to call this function, pygame.display.flip. After that, let's introduce some delay, time delay, and finally, let us call this function clock dot tick. 
and let's specify 100 over here. This will actually make sure that the frames are being, let's say, represented 100 times. This command is actually not relevant. Over here, we can specify the delay. For example, let's introduce one over here. And finally, let us increment the index of the frame. Perfect. Let's double check over here what's happening. Pygame.display.flip. Let's introduce some delay. Pygame.time.delay. Perfect. And let's tick our clock. Now again, select this part. And let's look in our screen. Perfect. Here's our rail. Now go back to the code, click over here, press Ctrl C, and then at the end, call this function to close the animation window. Perfect. Let's continue with modeling. The next step is to draw the cart. So I will command here and I will write here cart. To draw the cart, we need to draw a rectangle. To draw the rectangle, we will use this function, pygame.draw.rect. And over here, we need to specify the top left corner of the rectangle, and we need to specify the rectangle width and height. So let's do that. However, the first argument, as always, in the drawing function is screen. Then, we need to specify the color of the card, and over here we need to specify the coordinates of the top left corner of the card. The coordinates are integer xc. Remember, xc is the reference point for defining all geometrical objects. xc minus card width. comma, and here you should be very careful, should be over 2, right? Then, the second, actually, coordinate is actually YC, okay? Then, we need to specify the cart width, and we need to specify the cart height. Okay. That's it. Now, let me just erase this part over here in order to make this code more readable. Okay, so let's run this code and let's see what happens. Aha, here it is. Here's our card. Congratulations. This is your first animation in Pygame. However, over here we are missing other objects. We are missing the pendulum, we are missing the wheels, and we are missing the ball. So let's create these objects. Let's go back to our code, go over here, again, Control c go over here, and close the simulation window. Perfect. The next step is to draw the pendulum circle support. Let's do that. Over here, again, we need to call pygame.draw and we need to call the function circle. To draw the circle, again, the first object is the screen, the second object is the color, and we have to choose the correct color, color pendulum support. Then, we need to specify a tuple denoting the center of the circle. The center of the circle is integer of xc, comma, integer of yc. And over here, we need to specify the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is defined over here. Pendulum support radius. So go over here and simply copy and paste the variable and paste it over here. Okay, again, a good practice is to verify after the code, after adding every geometrical object. So let's do that and let's see what happens. Here it is. Here's the circle representing the pendulum support. 
perfect. The next step is to draw the card wheels. Again, go back to our code, click over here, press Ctrl C, and over here, close the animation window. Over here, I will simply copy and paste the piece of code that I've wrote for drawing the card wheels. Again, we call the Pi game Draw Circle. We specify the screen, we specify the color wheels, and over here we specify the, the center point of the wheel. Here's the formula. Everything is defined with respect to XC and by taking into account the card width and the wheel radius. This is the left wheel and this is the right wheel over here. Okay, again, let's double check this part. And here it is. Here are our wheels. Perfect. Here's the piece of code for drawing the rod and drawing the ball. Here's the rod and here's the ball. Obviously, the position of the rod and the ball will not only depend on X, or better to say on XC, but they will also depend on the angle theta. Consequently, we need to take into account the angle theta. Let's first explain the code for drawing the rod. This point over here is the point B. Now let me use a different color such that you can see it a little bit better on the screen. So the point over here, that is the center of the ball, is the point B. How to define this point by knowing XC, that is X1 is now XC, and by knowing YC. YC is this value over here. Now, obviously, XB is XC minus rod length, and the rod length is L, multiplying sine of this angle. That is, we simply take this distance, and we subtract this distance from XC. That is, XC minus this distance, and this distance is L times sine theta. This is how we define XB. And X2 over here is actually XB. How about YB? Mm -hmm. To define YB, we first take YC. And then from YC, we need to subtract this distance over here. Note that YC is measured from the top of the screen over here. So, Obviously, we take YC minus L cosine of theta, and that's precisely what's written over here. Once we know the coordinates of the point B, we can simply draw the line. We use this function, we specify screen, we specify the color of the rod, and over here we specify the start point. The start point is this point here, and that's the C point. And the end point is actually the point B with the coordinates given over here. Now, we can draw the ball. To draw the ball, we call the function pygame draw circle. We specify the screen, we specify the color, and we specify the center of the ball, or better to say the center of the screen, and we specify the coordinates of the point B, and finally we specify the ball radius. And believe it or not, that's it. That's the complete code for sketching, or better to say, for animating the motion of our card pendulum system. Let's run now the complete animation. Since this window is still active, I need to go back over here. I need to press Ctrl C and I need to close my simulation window. Now, I will simply execute the complete code. And let's see the output. Okay, here it is. Here's the complete animation of our pendulum on the card. Looks amazing. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.